Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today's video is all going to be about winter layers. So stick around. So this is a quick rundown of my favourite layers that I layer up with in the winter. And this is just some of my thoughts about why I choose what I choose and just to give you guys some idea if you're in the market for something or you don't quite know how to layer up properly and this video is for you so stick around okay so let's start off with what I'm wearing now so first off my base layer base layer is one of the most important layers in any winter layering system or any layering system throughout the seasons so today I have just a pure wool shearing t-shirt on it's quite a long t-shirt it comes down to about here if I have it um, outside my trousers, obviously I have it tucked inside my trousers today. Um, I'm a big uh, supporter of wool, as you'll find out in this video, for layers, um, and I'll tell you some of the reasons why a little bit later. Um, but then obviously I've just got an all pair of underwear on because I'm not doing anything particularly physical today. Um, and today I happen to have on a pair of army surplus wool trousers. I can't remember what country they were from, but just a nice hard wearing pair of wool trousers and a pair of muck boots, um, any kind of wellies I always kind of um, think are a really good idea in the winter, uh, especially if there's a lot of moisture on the ground, Wellington boot would do, but I prefer those with uh, neoprene upper, like muck boots or gum boots, um, I believe there's quite a few other brands out there as well, uh, they're just really good winter footwear, they keep nice and warm and obviously they're 100% waterproof. So next We'll go to what I put on over the top of this. So my next layer I have on, on is a quite good thickness wool hoodie. It's got a three quarter zip on it for ventilation. Quite a generous sized hood. Uh, it is made by MKM Original, uh, a New Zealand brand. Uh, it's designed for thermoregulating so not only does it help wick moisture away which is what your base layer is for um, it's obviously wick moisture away from your body but um, it also insulates quite well this is a combination of merino wool and possum fur I know fur is going to trigger a lot of people here um, but possums are an invasive species in New Zealand so they are their numbers are controlled to protect the local wildlife and obviously it's better to utilise an animal wholly rather than just killing it and dumping its body somewhere. Um, and its fur is very unique in that it's the only other species other than polar bears, I believe, that have like a hollow um, type of hair in their fur, which is really good for insulation. So hence I've got this. It also thermoregulates like the merino wool does that's within this. So that's why I choose these. Also another good thing about wool is it's uh, spark resistant so for when we're out here practicing bushcraft and you're next to a fire you don't want any of those sparks flying hitting your clothing and then burning holes in it. Next layer that I'd always try and use and obviously now this year it's more important than ever to have something like this is I tend to have a buff instead of a face mask because it's multi-purpose. So not only is this going to insulate my neck, um, which is one of the most important areas to insulate, so your neck and your head are really important to insulate, especially if you're um, going from hot to cold, so moving a lot and then stopping, because unlike your hands, your feet, and part of your legs and your arms, the veins and arteries in your uh, neck and head cannot vasoconstrict, so they, the uh, Basically the arteries and the veins can't close up to restrict the blood flow to protect your core when it comes to your neck and your head because obviously your brain needs constant blood flow. Otherwise you'd end up stroking out and dying. You will always lose the same amount of heat from your neck and head regardless of how cold you get because of your brain's constant need of oxygen. So this is kind of comfortable for the temperature at the moment but if I've, I'd been working hard um, 
you know, I was doing some miles or something or had to carry something heavy over any distance, I started to build up a slight sweat, then I would need extra layers to then put on top of this, or if it was raining heavily or snowing heavily, then I would put an extra layer on top of this. Um, when it just gets a little bit colder, the easiest thing to do is just put a hat on. So without further ado, we'll run through some of my other layers that I like wearing and why and when I'd wear them. So stick with me guys. Thanks for sticking with me this far. Please remember to like, comment on the video. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, when you click on the notification bell, please select all notifications so you'll get notified when I drop my next video and uh, all my future videos after that. Please, uh, I appreciate you supporting the channel and uh, without further ado, I will carry on with my layers. I think we'll go from right to left, just to keep things nice and uh, simple. Um, and we'll just go through one layer at a time. So, start off with my hard shell. Hard shell basically just means you're fully waterproof clothing. Uh, it's not quite as breathable as the layers that are underneath normally, um, but it provides much better wind and water protection. This particular jacket is made by a New Zealand company called Stony Creek. They're a New Zealand hunting uh, brand. Uh, while I will be talking about my favourite brands, I am not sponsored uh, by any of these brands or supported by any of them, which is kind of upsetting to me, <laughs> uh, as these garments are all pretty expensive. Um, obviously I'm buying this stuff with my own money. Um, but I do a lot of research before I buy anything, based on my experience. So, yeah, my current jacket is this Stony Creek smock. So it has pretty good sized hood, so I tend to like having hoods on my mid layers and my outer layers um, to work in conjunction with the hat. A lot of people don't like hoods, some people don't like hats. Uh, I like having both because it just provides more uh, options and um, it also means if it gets really, really like bitterly cold and like heavy driving wind and rain, then I can chuck some extra hoods on and I'll be fine. But yeah, so it's a pretty good. I like having longer waterproofs that cover my backside and my groin. Um, this one comes down to about here, so just below my groin level. Uh, it's really good. In fact, I find it a little bit too warm sometimes um, in any other conditions other than late autumn, in through winter and into early spring. Because um, it is just so bombproof in bad weather. But yeah, I, like I said, I do run a bit hot in heavy weather. Um, I tend to overheat quite easily because I run quite hot so most of the time I do wear shorts pretty much year round. The only reason I'm not wearing shorts today is because I'm being pretty stationary at my bushcraft, uh, at my bushcraft camp uh, on my school grounds and um, because I'm not moving around a lot and the temperature's meant to get up to a maximum of about 3 degrees Celsius today uh, with a cold temperature of about minus two degrees Celsius, I thought trousers would be the way to go. Um, but that's why I prefer longer, longer clothing for my uh, mid and my like outer layers, uh, just because it covers a bit more. If it gets really cold, uh, if I'm being active, like if I'm climbing a mountain or doing some hiking or uh, canoe trips, or whatever, and it's really cold, then underneath my shorts I might wear a pair of long johns. Uh, just to keep my uh, legs that a little bit warmer, but uh, I also prefer the extra freedom of movement that shorts uh, provide. I'll probably go through my uh, summer layout, as it were, as this is more of a winter and autumn layout. But yeah, this is my hard shell. You'll notice in this video that I'm not uh, bringing any hard shell trousers. I don't tend to like wearing them. I have worn them quite extensively, but I prefer not to, that's why I just prefer wearing some uh, shorter cut shorts that are fast drying and a long hard shell and then wear some gaiters over the top of whatever boots or willies I'm wearing just to provide me that uh, protection from the water going down into my boots because nobody likes wet boots. Um, but if the weather's really really bad then if I wear shorts underneath I can chuck on a pair of uh, 
say if I'm doing a mountain, I can chuck on a pair of waterproof trousers over the top of my shorts and I don't tend to overheat too much. But um, yeah, I, I do tend to wear shorts more. It just happens with this layering video. Not everyone's as crazy as I am wearing shorts year round, so I thought I'd wear some trousers for your benefit. Next up, we'll go with my soft shell. Next layer, soft shell. So, again, most of the time I will wear a soft shell as opposed to a hard shell as my outer layer. Slightly more breathable. Uh, this particular jacket is very, very wind resistant. Has a nice gridded fleece lining, I don't know if you can see that, um, which uh, traps pockets of air, so it's very insulating. Um, it's a lot more breathable than a hard shell, but even this I find too warm under a lot of circumstances, so I'll just tend to go with a jumper. Um, this again is made by the brand Stony Creek. Um, I've been a fan of theirs for years, but I've only just uh, invested in their products um, because they are quite expensive, but they do thoroughly test their equipment over very rugged terrain in all weathers uh, and they do uh, listen to people's feedback and improve things accordingly so I am a big fan of their stuff uh, but yeah soft shell so what, what is a soft shell as opposed to a hard shell basically means it's weather resistant not weather proof so this thing is very good in the wind it will stop pretty much all wind um, it's a lot more insulating a little bit a lot well a lot more breathable than most hard shells unless you're going into things like Ventile which is also another favourite of mine but I haven't bought my Ventile jacket with me um, but it, they don't tend to hand, handle wet weather as well. There are some soft shell fabrics that do handle wet weather a lot better and are still more breathable but the uh, price range for those is very very high um, but obviously you get what you paid for. So yeah just another good soft shell jacket Again, it's good being full zip, so I can just chuck it on if I needed to. We have the famous Swanee, or Swan Dry Bush Shirt. So this is the original model, I bought this one second hand off eBay, it's got a few moth holes in it. But it's basically double layer wool, it's got a nice hood lace up front very long cut so again it looks almost like a dress uh, when you wear it but it is very warm it's almost acts like a um, soft shell it doesn't handle heavy wind particularly well um, you know it will heavy wind will get through this um, but it does shed like rain pretty well um, you know if I'm doing an emergency bike survival kit overnight or something or I know I've got to stay overnight with minimal kit or whatnot or if I'm just going off on a extended wilderness trip then this is definitely in my bag. It's quite heavy. It's not exactly in your ultralight or lightweight category but it is bomb proof, absolutely bomb proof, very warm, very comfortable um, and obviously you can wear it pretty close to fire without getting too many burn holes in it. I mean you can still burn holes in wool but it won't melt a hole in it, which is then has potential for sticking to your flesh, which uh, synth some synthetic layers can have. So yeah, Swan Dry. Again, another New Zealand brand. Um, again, it's because their weather's very similar to ours, but they tend to think about their clothing a bit more than we do. We're very aesthetic in this country. They're a lot more practical over there. So their stuff not only works, but they tend to be a lot longer cut, which if you spend any extended length of time, I find um, I like more and more having longer cut clothing. It just makes things so much nicer. So yeah, that's the uh, famous Swan Dry. General puffer jacket. So this it, particular one is made by company called, or designed by a company called Rab, I should say. I should imagine that most of them are made in very similar factories. Uh, this is synthetic insulation. It's whatever the new fancy synthetic insulation is that's uh, spun in a way that it acts like down, um, but it is synthetic so it'll dry a lot faster. So that's one of the things to consider when getting an insulating jacket. So this one does not have a hood, contrary to a lot of my layers. 
a layer like this is for throwing on when you've stopped after high activity. So when you know you get, you've uh, built up a lot of body heat, a little bit of sweat, it's amazing how fast you cool down when you stop. So having something like this, which is incredibly lightweight, incredibly uh, small to pack down, um, you know, you can fit it in your, in your bag, chuck it on over the top, it just keeps that body heat uh, where you need it. So obviously I've got this for my core, but as my other layers have hoods, I'm not too worried about this one not having a hood. So obviously that's my jumper's hood, or I can wear a hat underneath this. Very, very warm and very lightweight. Um, so some of the things to consider is down is a lot more comfortable over a broader range of temperatures than a lot of synthetics are. Um, and it packs down a lot smaller and they tend to be a lot lighter. They also tend to be a little bit more expensive, but there's a lot more variety on the market. Synthetic insulation, um, it's kind of catching up with down a little bit now, um, but it's a lot more weather resistant. Um, they're a little bit more hard wearing. Obviously down jackets, you'll have bits of down sticking out um, through the fabric eventually. Um, but yeah, if I get wet in this, this will still keep me relatively warm, whereas once down's completely soaked, um, it's pretty much knackered for a very long time. It takes a long time to dry out, um, and it will not insulate at all um, once it gets completely soaked. So down is obviously um, feathers from uh, mostly geese, um, and also you have to be a little bit dubious quite often with um, how these companies are sourcing their down because I have seen some pretty horrific things from some quite big companies um, on how and where they get their down from. So I tend to go for synthetic. Also, because I live in the UK, it rains a lot. So I just like having the peace of mind of knowing that uh, if I get a little bit damp, I'm not gonna ruin my jacket. But yeah, these things are great. Obviously a lot of people wear them. Most people are familiar with a type of jacket like this. Um, for really cold temperatures from uh, mid autumn all the way through till uh, mid spring I would definitely recommend carrying one of these just because you know they're comfortable lightweight they do the job so this is definitely an insulating layer so you can use this as a mid layer or an outer layer I tend to use this either as a outer layer over the top of a jumper for if it's really cold or if I um, have been walking really hard like going up a mountain pushing myself uh, with a fast pace or something and I stop uh, to either catch my breath check uh, compass and make sure I'm going the right way then I'll chuck this on just because it just gives you that extra uh, immediate uh, respite from the uh, cold taking all your body heat away. And a hat, um, most of the year when it, temperatures start getting cold I just wear a thin, um, thin beanie. This one is just a little thin fleece beanie as you can see as I was talking about earlier if you wear the, these sort of things, fleece near fire, then uh, you can and do get burn holes in them. Which is why I'm a big fan of wool, because not only are you less likely to burn a hole in it in the first place, but if you do, then you're not having a small drop of molten plastic dripping towards your flesh. Um, but yeah, so um, having a hat and a buff are very easy to have on. They regulate your temperature very well, so you could almost get away without a jumper as so long as you've got your head and your neck covered. And obviously as you're heating up and you have to shed layers, um, because that's the whole point of the layering system, is that you can uh, take stuff off and put stuff on as you need it, um, based on how much activity you're doing, how cold you're getting, what the temperature and the weather are doing. Um, but having a hat and a buff, you know, it's a lot easier to just take a hat off or a buff off, stuff it in your pocket or in the back of your uh, rucksack um, and get it back out and put it on your head than it is to take whole jumpers and jackets off. Obviously you have to stop, take it off, put it in your rucksack or whatever. So these are a lot easier to uh, put on and off than uh, taking off big thick layers like this. Um, thinner layers tend to be better because again you can regulate your body temperature a bit better. Um, so quite often even in really thick uh, fog with sleet and like frozen fog um, with heavy wind and a little bit of driving rain every now and then um, once the main 
like rains past, I normally take my shell off. Um, and if I'm really working hard, then I tend to take the jumper off and I'll just be in the wool t-shirt um, or a wool singlet, which is basically a wool vest um, with my hat and stuff on um, and obviously shorts. Um, and because my body's producing that much heat, I'm comfortable in there. Um, so, you know, you, you need to add and take layers away based on what your body's doing. Um, and the only way to do that is to get out and, you know, do stuff in layers. Um, but, that, you know, there are some certain things like, regardless of what time of year it is, um, I would definitely always take waterproofs with you because waterproofs can seriously save your life in really, especially on mountains. Uh, it's not too bad in the woods because you could always get under a um, heavy foliated tree. Um, or you you know have a tarp or something with you, but um, yeah, I definitely always recommend carrying some form of waterproof with you. Um, you could probably get away with having like three or four thick layers of wool. So if I had this and my swanny on, um, and obviously like a wool base layer, then I could probably get away with being out in heavy rain, even in really cold temperatures. It would just get uncomfortable after a while because obviously once wool gets completely saturated you know it will resist rain for a very long time and it'll keep you warm even when it does get wet um, but it will get quite heavy and bulky um, at that point and it will take slightly longer to dry than synthetic fibers so that's one of the benefits of synthetic fibers it tends to be lighter than wool it tends to be a lot cheaper than wool right, and we have this lovely piece of uh, clothing from bison bushcraft it's basically a canvas popover shirt and um, the good thing about canvas is it's, uh, it will shed light rain pretty well. Um, it breathes, fairly wind resistant. And uh, you could, if you wanted to, you could wax this or um, oil it to make it more weather resistant. Um, but yeah, this is just a great mid layer. Um, so yeah, if I wore a lightweight uh, wool, I tend to go with wool or merino wool for my base layers uh, underneath this. You know, I could quite happily use this as my mid slash out mid slash outer layer um, for most activities especially in the woods uh, it's very good very hard wearing um, again buy some bushcraft great brand um, love their stuff but very versatile having a um, hard wearing cotton shirt like this obviously cotton's not as good in the mountains because once it's wet it loses all its insulating values um, but canvas is a slightly different weave so it does resist water quite well as is ventile which I might go over in another video um, later on but yeah very versatile um, some of the Swedish army popover shirts are quite good as well I have some of those which I tend to teach in so after that obviously if we go back to hats so I tend to wear a thin beanie like this most of the time when it gets colder if it gets really cold, then a thick wool hat that covers the ears is even better. Now this is discontinued, I think. I don't think they make this anymore. Um, but this was from a uh, like a mountaineering company called Mountain Equipment, um, and it's an alpaca wool uh, faced uh, hat with ear flaps, um, and it's lined with gore windstopper which is like a soft shell fabric for um made by the same company that makes Gore-Tex um so very very good very good um and you know trying to find a nice hat that has the ear flaps without the like little cords and the pom-poms on the end it's quite hard and in heavy winds that can get a bit a bit tiresome but yeah that's another hat in terms of gloves so for my general kind of year round working in the woods gloves, a pair of uh, Nomex aviator gloves based on what the US Air Force pilots wear. Very long, heat resistant, so you can pick pots out of the fire. Um, very lightweight, packed down really small, um, leather palmed, got quite good um, dexterity and feel still in these. Um, when they get wet they're a little bit cold but they do dry quite fast um, and they are slightly cut resistant but these are great great all round uh, outdoor work gloves um, and they will keep your hands warm when it's cold after that obviously we've got your fleece fleece gloves these are just some thin fleece gloves made by Rab I think it's power stretch grip gloves or something because they've got grip on and they're made by uh, made out of Polartec Power Stretch which is a brand of fleece 
type of fleece. Um, warm, uh, one of the great benefits of gloves like these is they're very lightweight and they dry incredibly fast. So if you got absolutely soaked um, with these gloves, you can take them off, wring them out, um, and then stick them back on and they'll uh, warm up very quickly again. Um, so that makes them very, very useful. And then over the top of those, if it's really cold, then I have a pair of wool mittens. These are, I think they're Swedish army ish, or were, they're surplus. I don't think they use these anymore. Austrian, one of those two armies. Um, surplus, just wool mittens to go over the top. Um, again, they shed uh, weather very, very well, very insulating, and obviously, you can put them over the top of your other gloves just to give you that little bit of extra warmth. Um, it doesn't tend to get that cold here um, until later, well, earlier in the year, I should say. Um, Obviously you would think that December, January sort of time tends to be the coldest in the UK but because of global warming and stuff the last five to six years it's kind of been February, March sort of time just as we're starting to go head into spring we tend to have the really, really cold snaps of weather. Um, but yeah, that guys has been a rundown of my favourite layers and what I tend to wear in the colder weather. Hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Uh, so again, please remember to like, subscribe, share hit the notification bell um, and if you want to see more content like this or you uh, have any questions or queries or you think that any of my facts are not quite right and you've got the answers then please feel free to put the uh, comments down in the comments section um, and until next time guys remember one thing you were born wild so stay wild catch you next time